Welcome to today's webinar on time cards. Today we are going to be going over how to set up time card permissions, pay periods, clock in and out, and manage time cards for your employees. One thing to note is in order to use the time card feature in Open Dental, we do need to have employees, users, and pay periods set up. So the first thing we're going to do is go over the time card permissions. So to get to that, we are going to go to Setup, Security, and then we're going to go to the User Groups and select the Regular Users, as that is the permissions we're going to be looking at today. To navigate to it, we are going to go to the Manage module, and we can actually just minimize everything that we aren't needing to make it a little bit easier. Perfect. So here you can see the time card settings in the manage module. So the first one is going to be the edit all time cards. So if a user has this permission, they are able to edit any person's time card and have access to the time card manage window in the time clock section. One thing to note is that the security setting user cannot edit their own time card will override this permission. The next one is going to be time card delete entry. If a user group has this permission, then they are able to delete a time card entry. And we don't recommend using this permission because time card changes are tracked anyways. The last one is going to be the edit protected leave time card adjustments. So if they have this permission, then they are able to create, edit, and delete time card adjustments that are marked as protected leave for another employee. From here, in the top left, we are going to click on global security settings. So the first and biggest one is going to be the time card security enabled. If this is checked, it does enable the other two time card permissions, but more importantly, it limits users without the edit all time card permission from viewing other employees' time cards. This one is very important. If we check it, the other two settings are then available. The other two are users cannot edit their own time card and users cannot edit their own time card except current pay period. So as a practice, you get to decide if you want your employees to be able to edit their time card only in the current pay period or not at all. So for this example, we're going to select the users cannot edit their own time card except current pay period and then click OK. From here, we are going to select close and now we're going to set up pay periods. So in order to set up pay periods, we're going to go to set up, manage, time cards. So you'll notice on the left is going to be our pay periods. So with pay periods, we have three options here. We can either create more with the add one or generate many buttons. We can delete the selected pay periods by selecting and then deleting. And then we can also double click and then manually edit the start, end, and paycheck date. So we're going to leave this one and create some more. So we are going to select the generate many button from here, you get to choose which interval you would like to use. We are going to leave it on the semi-monthly for this example, and we are going to change the number of pay periods that we want to generate to be 20. From here, because we have the semi-monthly selected, with the semi-monthly, you get to select what period one day and period two day you would like, and if you want that to be the end date or the pay date. We are going to leave as is. One thing to note, this last day checkbox is going to make the period two day be the last day of the month. We are going to leave it and move on to the payday. With the payday, you can either select the day of the week or the number of days after the pay period. You then get to decide if you want to exclude weekends, which we are going to leave checked, and then you get to decide if you want employees to be paid before the weekend or after. Since this all looks correct, we are going to then generate. You will also notice that the start date right here is one day after the end date of your last pay period if you already have some generated. From here, we can look at the paycheck date and make sure that it matches our settings. You will notice that you see the paycheck date of the 1st and the 16th as we input. And on the days that are a couple days off, that is simply going to mean that our paycheck date fell on a weekend and because of our settings and we are excluding them, it is going to be the day before that weekend. Since this all looks good, we're gonna click okay. And you can now see all of our pay periods on the left. 
on the right is going to be our rules for our pay periods. We have three options here as well. So you can add, delete selected, or if there's one already created, you can double click into it to edit. So from here, we're going to select add. We have overtime if over a specific amount of hours per day. You have a rate two hours if it's before time of day or after. Then we have use rate three for weekend hours or if someone is overtime exempt. The last one is going to be the earliest clock in time. Now for the employees, you can have it apply to all employees or you can select specific ones. In this instance, we are going to leave it as all employees and we are going to enter in that it will be overtime if over eight hours per day. Once we click OK, the rule is going to show up right here. You will notice if you entered it in incorrectly for any reason, rather than deleting, you can double click into it and manually edit it again. In the bottom left is going to be the ADP information in case you want to connect that. And then there's going to be the options at the bottom. So the options at the bottom are going to be use decimal format rather than column format. Calc daily button makes adjustments if breaks are over 30 minutes and to use seconds on time cards when using the column format. This is up to your preferences. From here, because our pay periods are set up, we are now going to close. Now, making sure that we are in the manage module, we're going to now look at the time clock. So in our time clock, we can see our employees here. One thing to note is going to be in order for your employees to use the time clock, they need to have their users, employees, and pay periods set up. Since we have done all that, we are going to look at will. If we want to, we can clock out will for break. And then we can also clock him back in. You will notice that his status changes depending on what we do. And if we select will and then view time card, we can see what his week has looked like. You'll notice at the top, it'll show which pay period you are looking at. And then it will show you your, their week totals as well. It will show how much of this was regular time versus rate two, rate three, paid time off, overtime, or protected leave. One thing to be aware of is protected leave is separate from all calculations for hours worked and payable hours. So they don't contribute to overtime calculations or any calculations at some total hours. From here, we are going to add an adjustment. So if Will came in today at eight, but he accidentally clocked in at 1018, then he can double click into this time clock event and edit it to be 8 a.m. We're going to add a note. And then select OK. You will notice that the adjustment that we made is shown in red. So it's very easy to see. And then the note is going to be on the right. The other way to add an adjustment is if you select add adjustment, you can then choose the day that you would like it to apply to and the amount of hours. So since Will was absent on Thursday, we're gonna change this to be the fourth and eight hours. You get to decide if you want this to be an overtime adjustment. So if, it's, if the hours are going to be counted as overtime instead of regular time, if this is protected leave or PTO, we are going to select PTO. The PTO types are completely customizable and you can do that in setup and then definitions. Once again, you have the option to add a note. Um, I'm just going to write absence and click okay. So you'll notice once again that the adjustment is in bright red and then it's going to show those eight hours in PTO. And it is also going to show up in the calculations at the bottom. We can double click into it if it was entered incorrectly, but as is his time card now reflects when he is working. So we can click close. We are now going to clock Will out. And now we're going to view all of our employees time cards. To do that, we are going to click in the manage button. From here, we can view our employees hours in this pay period, which is once again outlined at the top. It'll show you how many hours they work total how much of it was rate one, two, three, and overtime, and how much PTO and protected leave hours. From here at the bottom, you will notice the calculations. 
There's going to be daily and weekly. Daily is going to calculate the total hours worked each day, taking into account the rules for overtime, differential hours, and preference for breaks, which we will go over in a moment. Adjustments will be within a clock event. The weekly calculations is just going to calculate the weekly overtimes for employees who work more than 40 hours a week. From here, you can either select specific employees and run the calculations, or if you don't select any of them, we're going to click on daily. You'll notice it'll bring up a pop-up that says no employees selected. Would you like to run calculations for all employees? We are going to click OK, and it will then calculate how many hours they worked in this pay period. From here, we're going to click close. The last thing we are going to be going over is the final time card settings. So to get to this, we're going to go to setup, preferences, manage general, as the time cards is in the manage module. From here, we can see the time card settings. The first one is going to be the time card first day of the week for overtime. You can select this to be any day you would like. The next one is if you want ADP export to include the employee name. And the last one is going to be the allowed paid 30 minute breaks. If you click on the details, it is going to show that if this is checked, it is going to count up to 30 minutes of break time as paid. It also allows you to view the breaks that employees have taken in the manage module. It also allows a clock out status of lunch for unpaid breaks. If this is unchecked, then all break time is considered unpaid and it is going to disable the lunch clock out status and the view breaks button. One thing to be aware of is that changing this preference does not affect historical time card breaks. So if they've taken breaks in the past and you change the setting, it is not going to affect those ones that have previously been entered into their time cards. Once this is set up to your preferences, we're going to click OK. Now you should be able to set up time card permissions, pay periods, clock in and out, and manage time cards for your practice in Open Demo. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. If you have any additional questions, please contact our support line at 503-363-5432 or access our complete online manual at opendental.com. Make sure you're staying up to date on our latest training videos by subscribing to our channel and turning on notifications.